Well, artificial intelligence has easily been one of the largest stories, business themes of 2023. We know investors are excited about this, but it's also raising so many questions about the impact on society and countries such as Canada, which has been a home to some uh, deep thinkers in the world of AI for years, including Yashua Bengio, who uh, is uh, among with uh, the likes of Jeffrey Hinton, known as uh, one of the godfathers of AI, uh, winning the Turing Award back in 2018. He also co-founded Element AI, which was sold to service. Now, he is a professor at the University of Montreal, and he joins us this morning to talk about uh, the AI implications. Uh, professor, uh, nice to have you back with us here on BNM Bloomberg. I think we last spoke several years ago when obviously we were highlighting the excitement around this area. Now the world is watching very closely. What's been your general reaction to uh, all of the hype around AI that we've been witnessing so far this year? Well, we we have reached uh, a important milestone in, in the capability of AI with machines that understand language. And um, I think uh, a lot of people, including myself, are starting to um, be concerned that uh, uh, at the level of society and how we are organized, uh, legislation and public protection, we are not there yet in order to um, minimize the potential harms and risks that come with such power. And, and, and the capabilities of these systems are going to continue to increase uh, precisely because we're investing so much money, because it has such great uh, economic potential. But at the same time, we need to make sure we invest in safety and, and protecting the public. And how are some of the ways that, that we can go about doing that as best as possible? Because, um, you know, we hear government leaders who are stressing the importance of having um, um, laws in place to protect citizens. Uh, you hear uh, companies uh, that are at the uh, center of this charge saying we have to take all of this very seriously. But what would you specifically like to see that would bring you some um, some comfort, I suppose, that something is actually happening on that front? Well, um, there, there are many things. Uh, we need to increase the level of oversight, monitoring, documentation, testing, and so on of these really large systems. So that's one. Um, another is we need to make sure that when uh, somebody uh, opens a social media account, that we know it's a real person and we know who that person is. Um, you know how to do that uh, is is you know, there are many possibilities, but we want to avoid um, fake accounts uh, that that could be either controlled by. Uh, that could be controlled by an AI, uh, and that AI could be controlled by some malicious people, or or even you know uh, it, it be a kind of rogue AI that we have lost control of. Um, the other thing we need to do is make sure that when some content is shown to users, we know. I mean, the users can see very clearly with some visual sign that this is um, machine generated and not like a real recording or a real person that they are dialing with. Um, so all, all of that needs, uh, is needed to protect the, the public from manipulation that, that I think is likely to happen even more than is currently the case in coming years, as these systems can fool us into thinking we're uh, interacting with a real person. And, and with progress in the generation of videos and voices, this is, is going to be even worse. Do you think, why don't I get specific here? I mean, obviously the federal government right now has put forward um, uh, a bill um, which uh, certainly addresses some of the privacy issues. In many ways, it's also about updating our, our laws around social media. But is that the kind of thing that would tackle these issues that you're talking about, do you think? Uh, I don't think so. So privacy okay. is an important issue, but it's not the only one. Um, so uh, we need to make sure that those systems are um, following like agreed upon uh, steps and uh, verifications uh, to make sure that we you know we use whatever is the state of the art to to protect the public in the various possible harms that have been documented and or uh, uh, people have concerns over um, I don't think that the issue of privacy here is really uh, dealing with uh, the problem of manipulation uh, that, that people can be uh, fooled 
um, by content or by interaction with something through a computer. So, so we need extra legislation. Also, an important thing we need is that legislation needs to be flexible. Uh, I mean, the framework needs to be flexible because uh, things are going to happen we don't expect. People are going to find ways to use these AI systems that could be nefarious. And it's hard to predict all of those things in, in, a, in a very uh, rigid legislation. So we need an agency that's going to have the freedom to react quickly when new dangers uh, show up. The other um, observation some have made, um, uh, given the work you've done in this area and, and your peers here in Canada, that um, um, much of the hype this year, uh, at least um, in, in the investing world, let's say, uh, we see it through the lens of uh, largely foreign companies. Um, why is it that, uh, I, and I know uh, we mentioned, obviously you were involved with starting up a company which, which, uh, which really tried to unlock some of the promise of AI, uh, a, a homegrown company, but why is it that there is so much AI talent in this country and yet we seem to be talking about all these big foreign companies uh, that are sort of the profit centers so far when it comes to AI power? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Canada doesn't have a history of um, long-term risky investments at a large scale. We are starting to have uh, an ecosystem of AI startups and, and some, you know, becoming larger. But um, this takes time, and and you know what takes actually more time is changing the culture. Like our business, our businesses in Canada, our investors, our you know, local investors, are very conservative. They are used to the kinds of investments that have you know worked for them for many decades. Uh, uh, or if not centuries, and um, the world of technology and especially AI is is really a different game, um, where um, the, the the horizon may be uh, you know larger, the risks may be larger, and the returns are larger, and you need different strategies for that. Um, so I'm, I mean, a lot of people in Canada are well aware of what I'm saying, and but but changing that culture is not easy to do. I guess the challenge becomes, because we see this with uh, when large foreign technology companies um, decide to make changes or ultimately disrupt industry in Canada, people sometimes get upset about it. I guess, it, it, you know, is there, you know, if we are a somewhat risk averse, but you now have a situation where we have to hope that large foreign private companies will take the steps uh, that you've just outlined to avoid people feeling manipulated or, um, you know, uh, confused around um, uh, how this AI technology is used. You know, what what is the message to those companies, uh, you know, from your vantage point? Well, because the AI world is changing so quickly right now, I think there are actually a lot of opportunities for Canadian companies to, you know, jump into this and um, and you know, it, it's and, and potentially win uh, in some niche applications, potentially then grow even larger. Um, so uh, we are at an inflection point, and it's a good time to um, to make many bets on on uh, on this technology. And. Um in, in terms of the bets that are being made, obviously we're, we're hearing uh, an explosion of ideas. Um, uh, in terms of building something sustainable, uh, yeah, what, what excites you the most right now, uh, looking at the opportunity and, and the talent pool, especially here in Canada? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really a business person. Uh, I'm, I'm a researcher, and so what I've been focusing on are the current technical limitations or like capability limitations of large language models. For example, they're not as good as us at many reasoning tasks. Sometimes they seem like they look like they're reasoning, but, but sometimes they fail on things that uh, you know, look easy for us. Um, they, they can make very uh, you know, wrong statements with very high confidence, which is a very serious problem when you want to deploy these things. In many applications, you, you want something that's going to be more reliable. And um, they, um, you know, they, they, they are missing a lot of the um, uh, conscious processing abilities that we associate with, uh, with uh, human cognition. So 
I, I think that any progress on these fronts, uh, which could be happening in universities as well as in, in industry, uh, could have big impacts in terms of the scope of applications that, that become uh, feasible. 